Hey everyone, in our previous video, we learned about two important protective devices, the Miniature Circuit Breaker, MCB, and Residual Current Device, RCD. To sum up, MCBs safeguard against overloading and short circuits, aiming to prevent excessive heating and potential fire hazards. On the other hand, RCDs are dedicated to shielding against earth leakage, thereby reducing the risk of fatal accidents resulting from direct or indirect contact. MCBs function through thermal and magnetic tripping mechanisms. Thermal tripping responds to overloading using bimetallic strips, while magnetic tripping reacts to short circuits through electromagnetic coils. In contrast, RCDs operate using a differential current transformer to detect imbalances between the live and neutral currents. Tripping is triggered by a sensing coil upon leakage detection. Next, tripping time varies between MCBs and RCDs. MCBs trip based on multiples of the rated current, ranging from milliseconds to hours, whereas RCDs trip almost instantaneously, triggered when leakage current surpasses the sensitivity rating, typically within 300 milliseconds. Additionally, MCBs come in various types, each with specific thresholds for triggering magnetic tripping, while RCD types are designed to handle different residual current waveforms. In this video, we will delve into some example scenarios to gain a better understanding of how these protective devices mitigate the risk of equipment damage, fire and electric shocks. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. Imagine this. Suppose a house receives single-phase supply of 230 volts. At the electrical distribution board, there is an incoming 63 amps type B MCB and one of the RCD rated 30 milliamps is connected to a socket, powering an oven. Now, let's examine the first scenario, an overloading condition. Considering the total current, drawn by all the equipment within the house reaches 72 amps, slightly surpasses the 63 amps MCB rating. This overcurrent can cause the main cable and bimetallic plate within the circuit breaker to heat up. Referring to time current graph of the circuit breaker, the 72 amps current is approximately 1.13 times the rated current of 63 amps, falling within the thermal region. Consequently, the breaker will take about 60 minutes to trip, signaling an overloading condition and preventing the temperature from reaching a dangerous level that may lead to a fire hazard. In this scenario, the RCD will not trip because an equal current of 72 amps is flowing through both the live and neutral cables. Let's proceed to the second scenario, a short circuit condition where the live cable accidentally makes contact with the neutral cable. In this scenario, the overall impedance is very low due to the low impedance of the live and neutral cables. Assuming both cables have an impedance of 0.15 ohms and total up to 0.3 ohms. Before we dive into our calculations, it's essential to mention that to simplify the calculation throughout this video, we will be assuming a power factor of 1, and a phase angle difference of zero between voltage and current. However, in practical scenarios, these factors should be considered for more accurate calculations of current flow. The short circuit current is calculated as 767 amps, approximately 12 times the 63 amps rated current of the MCB. Referring to the tripping curve, this exceedingly high short circuit current will trigger the magnetic tripping mechanism and cut off the fault in less than 10 milliseconds. This prevents more serious consequences such as a fire. Similar to first scenario, the RCD will not trip because an equal current is flowing in both the live and neutral conductors. In the third scenario, we will examine an earth fault situation where the live cable is broken and comes into contact with the equipment frame. Simultaneously, a person accidentally touches the frame of the equipment. This implies an indirect contact because the person does not directly touch the live cable. In this scenario, we'll compare both the TT and TNC earthing systems. For a TT system, the equipment frame is connected through earth cable to an earth rod. On the other hand, for a TNC system, the earth cable is combined with neutral cable and connected back to transformer neutral point. Let's begin by examining the TT system. In the event of an earth fault, the complete loop will include the higher earth impedance as predominant. For example, assuming 5 ohms for the earth electrode of the house, 5 ohms for the transformer neutral earth electrode, human body impedance of 5,000 ohms, the live cable impedance of 0.15 ohms. 
drawing an equivalent circuit and using Ohm's law, the total earth fault loop current will be calculated as 22.67 amps. The current flows through two parallel paths, 22.647 amps through the earth electrode and 0.023 amps through the human body, back to transformer neutral point. In this case, the total fault current of 22.67 amps is much smaller than the 63 amps ratings, and the MCB will not trip. However, the RCD comes to the rescue. Noticing that the live current is 22.67 amps, while the neutral current is 0 amp, the RCD will detect the imbalance current of around 22.67 amps, exceeding the sensitivity threshold of 30 milliamps. Consequently, the RCD will trip immediately to reduce the risk of electrocution towards humans. From this example, we can comprehend why an RCD is mandatory for TT systems. Due to higher earth impedance, the earth fault current is smaller and relying solely on an MCB would not cut off the circuit. If an RCD is not installed, the 23 milliamps current will flow continuously through the person, potentially leading to a fatal due to electrocution. In a TNC system, the earth cable is combined with the neutral cable. During an earth fault, the complete loop includes lower cable impedance. Similarly, let us draw the equivalent circuit, and using Ohm's law, the earth fault loop current will be calculated as 766.678 amps, with approximately 0.023 amps flows through the human body, and the rest of the current flow through the neutral combined with the earth cable, back to the transformer neutral point. In this case, the RCD will not trip because the difference between the current of the live and neutral cables is only 23 milliamps, which is smaller than the sensitivity of 30 milliamps RCD. However, notice that due to the small cable impedance, the total earth fault current in a TNC system is much higher, approximately 12 times the rated current of the 63 amps MCB. Consequently, the MCB will trip immediately to cut off the circuit. In this case, we notice that in a TNC system, MCB trips, but RCD may or may not trip depend on different scenarios. Does this imply that the RCD is not necessary in a TNC system? In fact, this is because we are considering an indirect contact with equipment frames. In cases of direct contact with live cables, MCB cannot provide any protection. So in the fourth scenario, let's consider a situation in a TNC system where a person with a body impedance of 5,000 ohms accidentally comes into contact with an exposed live cable. In this case, the voltage across the person will be approximately 230 volts, and the leakage current flowing through the body would be approximately 46 milliamps. Consequently, the difference in currents exceeds the sensitivity threshold of the 30 milliamps RCD, causing it to trip immediately and effectively reduce the risk of electric shock. Due to the small current, the MCB would not trip during direct contact with the live cable. So, from this example, RCD indeed plays a crucial role. However, in some countries, RCD is not considered compulsory as they are more concerned about indirect contact. If it is direct contact with live cable, a correctly designed RCD can indeed reduce the risk by cutting off the circuit. According to IEC 60364-4-41, the sensitivity of the RCD should be 30 mA or lower, particularly installed for socket outlets and mobile equipment used outdoors. It's worth noting that the severity of electric shock during the short period before RCD complete the circuit interruption may vary depending on individual body characteristics. That concludes today's video and we hope you now have a clearer understanding of MCB and RCD. Both of them are necessary in our electrical system to keep us safe. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share it with others. Thank you for watching.